Hi boys and girls, Miss Maddie here with your November Harvest of the Month lesson. So this lesson is recorded for you to either watch in the classroom with your teacher or at home with an adult. Before we dive into talking about our November Harvest of the Month, let's talk about what all Montana Harvest of the Month items have in common. There are two things that all Montana Harvest of the Month items have in common. Can you remember what they are? If you're thinking that all of our Harvest of the Month items are either grown or raised in Montana, that's correct. Everything you learn about in Harvest of the Month lessons were either grown in this state or raised here, such as cattle. The second thing that's true about all Montana Harvest of the Month items is that they're all good for our bodies in some way. Maybe that means they have protein in them that helps us grow strong muscles or maybe they have potassium in them that's really good for our heart health. They might have vitamin A or vitamin C. All Harvest of the Month items are good for our body in some way. So for our November Harvest of the Month, we are learning all about winter squash. And I've got a few winter squash here. We've got a delicata squash, a buttercup squash, and a butternut squash. Now, can any of you remember from past lessons why winter squash is called winter squash? You can pause the video and take a minute to think about it. Okay, what did you come up with? If you were thinking that winter squash are called winter squash because they grow all through the winter, that's actually not true. Winter squash do not grow in the winter, but they can be stored all winter long in a cool, dry place. So somewhere like a basement or a cellar or a dark closet, you can put winter squash in those places and they will last for months and months and months all through the winter. So that's why they're called winter squash. Pretty cool, huh? All right, friends, so like I said, these are three examples of winter squash. Now, winter squash is actually one of the oldest cultivated crops in the Western Hemisphere. They are native to Central America, somewhere between Mexico and Guatemala. So if you look at a world map, picture between Mexico and Guatemala, and that's where winter squash were first originated. Now, for our November Harvest of the Month winter squash lesson, we are going to talk about the three sisters. A little bit of background. Native Americans developed a really strong cultural and spiritual bond to the land that sustained them. It helped them live. And agriculture, or growing plants and growing food, really helped Native Americans produce enough food to establish larger villages. Today we're going to learn about three different foods that Native American tribes, including the Iroquois tribe from the East Coast and the Hidatsa tribe from the Western Plains, referred to as the Three Sisters and why. Now there are two other crops that were historically grown with winter squash and those are the other two sisters. Can you name them? Take a minute and pause the video and see if you can come up with the answer with your class. All right. If you said the other two sisters are corn and beans, you're correct. The three sisters are corn, beans, and squash. Now these crops were very important crops. Hunting did provide a lot of the protein for indigenous folks, but Corn, beans, and squash also provided some other nutrients and other important parts to their diet. So let's dive in and learn about it. All right, now here is the picture of the three sisters up close. As you can see, the corn is growing tall and is lending support to the sister bean. Now the bean helps her sisters by feeding food to the soil through her roots and that's through a relationship between fungus and the roots, which takes in nitrogen from the atmosphere or the air and converts it into a form that's usable by plants. So the bean is taking nitrogen in, turning it into food 
for the corn and the squash. And then you can see the squash down below growing wide leaves to shade the ground and prevent weeds from growing around the corn and the beans. In that way, all of the sisters are working together. The three sisters are an example of interdependence, which is when each living thing depends on the other to survive. Now, friends, I'm going to have your teacher or your adult hand out some index cards. On that index card, you are going to write a sentence about someone that you depend on. And on the back of that index card, give an example of how you depend on that person or how they help you. Okay, you can pause the video now. Okay friends, did you write about the person you depend on? That person that you wrote about is interdependent with you. You depend on them and maybe they depend on you. Maybe you help each other. The same way that you are independent with that person is how our corn, our beans, and our squash are dependent on each other. So now for the last part of our activity, I am going to have your teacher pass out some interdependence note cards. The interdependence note cards have corn, beans, and squash on them. And then there are also shade, trellis, nutrients, protein, vitamin A and C, and carbohydrates. It is your job to work in a group of about three or four people to match those cards together. So, each of the three sisters will be connected with one of these cards and one of these cards. All right, so go ahead and pause the video, get into groups and match those cards up. Okay friends, how did you do? Were you able to match the corn with the trellis? And were you able to match the beans with the nutrients? Remember, they bring nutrients into the soil. And the squash with the shade. Were you able to match the beans with the nutrients with the protein? And the squash with the shade with the vitamin A and C? Which leaves you with corn with the trellis with the carbohydrates. Another awesome thing about the three sisters is that when they are eaten together in a meal, you are getting a full, balanced, healthy meal. You're getting protein, carbohydrates, and vitamins. So if you eat them together in a soup or in a stir fry, that is a full, balanced meal. Now I hope you all will take away from this lesson the idea that planting a three sisters garden creates a beneficial relationship between the three plants. They'll help each other grow. Now, to close out our lesson, since I can't give you a taste test in person, I'm going to leave you with a roasted squash recipe and a quick little video about me preparing roasted squash so that maybe when you get home, you can do it with your adults at home.